want to ask you about one of the high profile uh, deals or at least companies you've been working with, which is WeWork. Uh, we've been reporting on WeWork practically uh, you know, every day uh, for the past several months. Um, you worked with the special committee. This is we did. This is we did. after Adam Newman was ousted. Yeah, we, we were hired, our firm was hired by the special committee of the board of WeWork uh, to advise them on finding a financing solution. And, you know, for all the reasons that you mentioned, I mean, it was a really complicated situation. There was, you know, it was under the public microscope like nothing I've ever seen. Um, there was a change in perceived valuation very significantly through an IPO filing. Right. Uh, and you had a founder and a CEO who left the company. And so for all those reasons, it was complex, uh, to, to say the least. Right. I, I, you know, I would say that having gotten so involved in this, Andrew, is that it's a, it, the core of the business is a really, really good business, actually. A and really good, good business that's worth $15 billion or $5 billion? Well, I think you know, what, what SoftBank has basically said is we're a long-term believer in this business. We know it's going to be a lot, worth a lot more in five-plus years. And so they made this enormous investment in, in support of that. But I, I'm just saying that the, the actual business model how they think about space, which I didn't know before right. we got hired. I just, we, we sort of began to feel and now feel quite strongly. This what very do you strong make business. of the idea, though, that the only, dare I say, I'll get in trouble for the, the, the only girl to really show up at the dance, if you will, was SoftBank, to double down on its own investment. And I know that there was talk that J.P. Morgan and others were around the hoop, but it sounds to me, from the reporting I've done, that they really weren't a, a, a genuine cover bid. And so what, what does that say about the business that nobody else saw that, saw value in the company the same way, at least, that, that we worked it, or that SoftBank did? Well, first of all, there was a process, for sure. Um, there were a number, there, there was lots of capital that was looking at and interested in WeWork in various different forms, from common equity to preferred equity to credit, et cetera. So, so there has been interest across the board. Um, but SoftBank was already a major investor in the company. Right. Um, they already owned about 30% of the company, and they made a decision that they really wanted to back it, and they, they're believers. Uh, but the, I guess the question everyone's asked is, were they throwing good money after bad? Or yeah. how much of it was pro about protecting the previous investment, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, they, they, listen, they're, they're, SoftBank is incredibly sophisticated, smart people. They've seen lots of different growth investments over the years. They made a decision to invest a lot more money in this company because they think it's going to win. Um, what was the, what's the lesson, though, of WeWork? Because one of the other things that's happened as a function of this IPO going wrong is that it feels like the IPO market has fundamentally shifted. Yeah, I don't think so, really. I mean, that, that was the, uh, around the time this was happening, I think there was a, a great question about whether or not, you know, IPOs were appropriate for growth enterprises of this profile. I actually don't, I don't agree with that. I, I think I, the IPO market is a very strong alternative and a very attractive alternative for a lot of growth companies. Um, and so I think it'll continue. You think it continues? But I, I, I guess the question, though, is do you think that there's been a shift in the mindset of investors about the type of valuation that they're willing to ascribe to companies that lose money? And I, therefore, I, I, the business model yeah. shift that some of these companies are going to have to undergo and the valuation change that will take place. But, but this, this has happened so often over the years. You know, the pendulum has swung, and now the pendulum is out quite far in the context that you're talking about, Andrew, which is that the bar is higher. It just is. I mean, you, you know, in terms of profitability, in terms of governance, in terms of growth. But the, this time it actually happened, though, in the private markets instead of wading into the public markets, which I would argue is a good thing because it means the retail investor didn't get left holding the bag on any of this. The markets were working in a way. I mean, basically, that's, that's, that was the decision the public markets formed in its own unique way here right. was not to, not to proceed.